So in this video, I wanted to talk about homomorphisms and more specifically isomorphisms, which is a special type of homomorphism. So before we can talk about isomorphisms, we need to define what is a homomorphism. So to define this, we're going to let G be a group with operation star. So this is just an arbitrary operation that's, that's symbolized with star. And let G prime be a group with operation square or box. So we're going to say a mapping phi that takes elements in G and maps them to G prime is called a homomorphism from G to G prime if it preserves the group operation. So if you have a mapping that preserves the group operation, that mapping is considered a homomorphism. So what do we mean by preserving group the group operation? Well, this is what we mean. If we have two elements A and B in G, so A and B are in our domain, then phi of A star B because our inputs are elements of G and we set our operation with star with respect to G. So phi of A star B, if it's a homomorphism, will be equivalent to phi of A box phi of B. And what we mean by this is if you have a mapping, you can take A and B and imply the operation G's operation to A and B and then put it through the mapping and get the same thing as if we took A and put it through the mapping, B and put it through the mapping, and then applied the operation under G prime. Okay? So this will be a little more clear when we go over the special cases. So two special cases of homomorphisms is firstly isomorphism an isomorphism so we say an isomorphism if phi is if it preserves the operation and is also a one-to-one -one mapping and on two mapping then phi is called an isomorphism. So an isomorphism is a homomorphism that is also one-to-one -one and on two. Now we can also say an isomorphism that maps from a group into itself, its self, meaning if phi takes G and maps it to G, and it's an isomor it's it's an isomorphism, so it's one to one, it's on two, it preserves the operation, and it maps from G into itself into G, we call this an automorphism. So automorphisms and isomorphisms are special types of homomorphisms. So let's look at an example, okay? Let's look at the following theorem. Let's say an infinite cyclic group. In last video, we went over cyclic groups so we're going to say an infinite cyclic group G that's generated by A is isomorphic to the set of all integers with respect to addition, okay? Where phi takes elements from the group generated by A and maps them to an integer with respect to addition, okay? And it does this by taking 
a to the k. Remember, if, if phi takes elements of the cyclic group, group A, we know by definition of cyclic groups that an, the element, all the elements in the group generated by A is just the base A to some integer. So we just took that definition and, whoops, that's actually going to equal k. So this is the definition of the mapping. So we're given a to the k, and it's just going to map it to k, okay, which is an integer under addition, okay? So let's try to prove this, and in doing so, we'll kind of learn exactly how isomorphisms work, okay? Okay, so first we're going to look at operation preservation. Because remember we said isomorphisms preserve the operation, so for the first thing we need to prove is that it preserves the operation. So we're going to let x and y be an element of the cyclic group generated by A. Then by definition of the cyclic groups, we know there exist integers k and l. Such that x equals a to the k and y equals a to the l. That's just definition of cyclic groups. Okay. So we have x equals a to the k, y equals a to the l. So remember what we're wanting to show. We want to show that phi of x, y is the same thing as if we take them individually. So if that's what we want to show, and we know, let's write this up here, we just wrote it, but x equals a to the k and y equals a to the l, okay? So let's plug these in. So um, let's say phi of a to the k times a to the l just by substituting in. So let's say by substitution. And just with exponent rules, we know we can write this as phi to the a to the k plus l. Okay, now remember the definition whoops, of our mapping is that phi takes a base to an integer and just maps it to that integer. So we have a base a and an integer k plus l, so we know this is just going to equal k plus l by definition of the mapping. So we know what phi of x, y is. Let's see what phi of x, phi of y is. So by definition, phi of x is just phi times a, phi of a to the k, and this is phi of a to the l. And then by definition of the mapping, we have this is equal to just k, and this is just equal to l, but we also have to remember that phi maps elements of the cyclic group A, that's generated by A, to integers with respect to addition. So this here, is k plus l, okay? Because this is an element in our codomain, this is an element in our codomain, and it's with respect to addition. So we show that this and this are equal. So we can say phi preserves the operation. So at this point, we know that phi is a homomorphism, but we want to go a step further and say it's an isomorphism. So we need to prove two more things. Remember, we need to prove that it's one-to-one -one and on-to. So let's show that it's one-to-one. -one. Now, whenever you want to show that something's one-to-one, -one, you're always going, remember, I do have a video on um, how to show things are one-to-one, -one, but real quick, know that this is, Given this statement, we want to prove if phi of x equals phi of y, then x equals y. 
and that's how to show something is one to one. So by definition, we're gonna, well, let's just say let X and Y be an element of cyclic group generated by A such that phi of X equals phi of Y. So remember by definition, if X and Y are, gener are elements of the group generated by A, we know that there exist K and L and Z integers such that X equals A to the K and Y equals A to the L. Okay, so we've kind of seen that set up before, but here we're trying to prove that X equals Y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say phi of A to the K, that's our X, phi of A to the L. So we wanna prove that A to the K equals A to the L. So with this, you can't necessarily assume that these are equal because we don't know that K and L are equal. There are situations where just because you have the same base and they're equal, it does not necessarily mean the exponents are equal as well. But what we can do is take the definition of phi, remember phi of A to the K is just K, and phi of A to the L is just L. So now we do know that K equals L, so we do know the exponents are equal, so also the bases are equal and the exponents are equal, so Therefore, since k equals l, a to the k equals a to the l, and then by substitution, x equals y. So we've proved that this is one to one. So to prove that this is isomorphic, we just need to prove one more thing, that it's on two. So our third thing, we need to prove that it's on two. Now, you can kind of see by definition that of the mapping that this is on two, um, and that's gonna be the truth with a lot of isomorphic groups. You're gonna have to prove that it's on two and it's gonna be kind of intuitive, but we're gonna write it, write it out because in proofs we need to, to prove it formally. So remember to prove that something is on two, we're going to pick something in our codomain. So let's say if K is an element of Z in our codomain. So, and then we need to show, and this is an arbitrary element chosen in our codomain, and we need to show that something maps to it. And then we've shown that the, that the um, mapping is on two. So if K is an element of Z, and the set of integers with respect to addition, then simply by definition, a phi, phi of a to the k equals k. So a to the k maps to k. So we picked an arbitrary element in our codomain and found something that mapped to it. And it was just by definition of our mapping. So we've now shown that our mapping preserves the operation, is one to one, and is on two. And those are the three criteria for a mapping to be isomorphic. So we can say, well, first we need to say thus, phi is on two. So then we can say, therefore, phi is an isomorphism. And that concludes our proof. So just um, remember that if you ever are trying to prove that something's isomorphic, you just have three things to show. You need to show that it preserves the operation. So just find, you need to show this equality. You need to show that it's one to one. And you need to show that it's on two. Okay, and that'll do it.